Hey guys, real quick, just wanted to say thank you to everyone who participated in the giveaway. We're gonna be announcing some winners pretty soon as we're wrapping it up, but I just wanna say thank you again for everyone who participated and thank you to 50 Cards for being able to sponsor us and for being able to provide us with really awesome products so that we can do giveaways like this. Please check out 50 Cards. They have a bunch of singles. They have a bunch of playset splits. They have a bunch of nation splits. They're getting up on the Shadowverse stuff. So please check them out and use code Nexus to get 5% off when you're at checkout. And without further ado, let's go right into the video. All right, guys, going right into the Gandiva deck profile. This deck is as meta as it gets right now. This thing is toppling not only uh, stride decks, but it's also toppling all those mask decks. Uh, kind of came out of nowhere, just Dragon Empire just dropped the best Dragon Empire support it's ever had in a long time, just out of nowhere, and the deck is amazingly fun. So let's just jump right into it. Starting off, I'm going with the traditional Gandiva ride line. So we got the Buckish, Scarlet Flame, Aguired, Aguired, then uh, Dipnil, Dipanion, and Gandiva. So this ride line is really nice because the Aguired, Aguired, lets you ride into the grade two for free. And the grade two lets you use Gandiva's act ability for free when you ride it. You can also use the Bazarga ride line just because it's a free ride line as well. The one searches a shield or a sword. The two lets you basically ride for free and then you discard the sword, the shield for Gandiva. So it's really up to you. I like this just because of the aesthetic and also just because the act ability is free, which is nice. And we do counterblast a lot in this deck. Then going into the main deck, starting off with our three copies of Gandiva for our Persona ride. Gandiva's first skills act, or sorry, the first skill is actually auto. Every time you retire something, choose a card from drop, bind it face down, which adds to its continuous ability of your front row gets 2K for each face down bind unit in your bind zone. And if you have five or more cards in your bind zone face down, this gets a crit, which is really easy to do. Like you can do it the minute you write this card, which is insane. Act ability, counterblast one once per turn. Choose five of your opponent's rear guards with different grades. Reveal the top five. And then for if you reveal the grade of the, of the cards that you chose on your opponent's board, you can retire them. If you only retired one or less cards, you can draw a card, then choose a card from your drop bind it face down. So even if you end up retiring nothing, or even if you only retire one thing, you can still add to the drawing and the binding and just keep your front row building up more power, which is insane how consistent this deck is. Then grade three, this card is just amazingly good because it feels too free. It's when it's placed on rear, if you have a Vanguard Gandiva, Soul Blast one, bind another rear guard face down. So just adding to that. Choose one of your opponent's rear guards, retire it. If you did not retire, draw a card, choose a card from your drop, bind it face down. So even if you don't get the retire, you bind something. If you do get the retire, Gandiva's auto activates and you bind something anyways. So the board is gonna be cleared. And then lastly for grade threes, I'm going a little overkill with this, I feel like. I'm running three best harvests. A lot of people are just running the two. Four is for sure overkill. Like don't run four grand best harvest. Like you don't you don't need to go that hard. But what best harvest does is in uh, normal order, gives your Vanguard the ability auto, every time you retire a rear guard, draw a card. So <laughs> it's just a lot of draws going on. Um, two is perfectly fine if you want to run just the two. I'm running three because I have the space for it, genuinely. And I feel like I want to see best harvest consistently. So I'm running three. Later, I'll probably drop it to two, but for now, we're keeping it like this. Grade twos, I am running two copies. What is your name? Colgaflan. Colgaflan. So what this does is if you discard it during your right phase, you can Soul Blast one, put this on the bottom of your deck, draw a card. Then when this is placed on rear, if you Persona Road, you can Counter Blast one, retire the entire column on your opponent's field on the same column as this unit, which is really cool. So Counter Blast one, retire two, nuts. You have to Persona Ride, so I'm only running two copies just because Persona Ride isn't really guaranteed, even if you draw a ton. Um, and I just don't want to be stuck with a card in my hand that doesn't do anything since it only works when you Persona Ride. But when you do see it, it's great. So we're running two of that. Then I am running four copies of probably the one of the best cards in this whole deck, Drag Ritter Alphagar. 
what Afagar does is when you're when your Vanguard Gandiva attacks, you kind of plus one. Bind this face down, look at the top five, call a unit to a rear guard circle and shuffle your deck. So you're multi-attacking. You swing with this first, Gandiva attacks, you kind of plus one. Bind this, so your front row is getting more power, and then you call a new unit so you can get four attacks during that turn. Uh, definite playset. If you if there were is a card that did this exact same skill, I'd be writing more of it. This is an amazing card. So with that being said, we're just gonna keep going with grade twos. I'm also running four copies of Rugian. Rugiant. Uh, what this does is when it's placed on rear, if you have Vanguard Gandiva, Counter Blast one, retire an opponent's rear guard. If you did not retire, draw a card, bind something face down. It's pretty much the same thing as um, Stur Sturgna, uh, it's, except it's a Counter Blast and instead of a Soul Blast buying something else. But they basically do the same thing, it's just to kind of propel you and get you going with all the binding and retiring. So definite playset as well. And then lastly, I am running four cop, or sorry, three copies of Meteor Flare Dragon. So I was debating between this and the Brachio, but I'm gonna go with the Meteor Flare uh, just because it can get more power and it helps retire things. So it's when placed on rear, all of your opponent's rear guards lose their continuous abilities, so like resist, gone. Uh, then, counter blast one, choose one of your opponent's rear guards in the same column as this unit and retire it. So it just helps you do another retire. Second skill, if your opponent is has a grade three vanguard and they have no rear guards, this gets an extra 10k power. So it's a huge beat stick if your opponent has no board, helps you retire things. This deck does get a little bit counter blast heavy, but it still works as a 10K beat stick potentially. So that's why I'm running it. If you don't want to run the Meteor Flare, I recommend running the Brachio. I'm forgetting its full name, but it's literally just when it hits, you retire it, you draw and you retire an opponent's rear guard, I believe, or it's just retire itself. You retire an opponent's rear guard. So that's a good substitution as well. I go back and forth between the two but I'm liking this lineup so far. So now we're gonna move on to our grade ones. Starting off with another new Scarlet Flame Bow card. This is Ukon. Well, what this does is when your Vanguard Gandiva in its name attacks, if this is in the back row, you can bind this unit face down and counter charge one. So this is your counter charge engine. It's counter charge engine. It feeds into your bind zone. It's still a really good card overall. So I'm running three of it just to be consistent. Um, and that way I can kind of go hard with my counter blasts. Then I'm running three twin buckler dragons, just our generic PGs. And then the one elementaria because we have G units running around with triple drive. Not too many grade four vanguards with triple drive, but because Chrono Jet and Messiah are still relevant in a competitive scene, this is still, you know, really prevalent to, you know, your matchups, just being able to PG for free if your opponent has triple drive. There is another Scarlet Flame or Drag Raider card for Gandiva. Um, that's like, you can, after it's done boosting, you can bind it face down to draw. That's also a really good card. I'm not particularly running it, but I can see myself running it maybe in the future. For this build, I'm just sticking with Counter Charge, maybe in the future, depending on my matchups and, you know, how tournaments go. Might change it up later, but for now, this has been working out pretty good for me. I like it. Trigger lineup is really, really simple. It's Drag Veda, restands your Vanguard. It's kind of obvious. If your Vanguard has a crit, you want to restand it and swing with it again. So yeah, and it's an over trigger. Eight crit, doing our four burning flails. I feel like everyone already kind of gets the idea at this point that skill crits aren't super important. It's just nice to have. They just, at the end of the battle, move to soul, give something 2k. It can maybe fix numbers, considering that Gandiva is constantly giving your front row like plus 20 to 25k, like anywhere, but in, in increments of two. You know, you can maybe fix some numbers, but at the end of the day, vanilla crits are just fine. But we definitely want eight crits. Then I'm doing four front because we definitely draw enough and why not make the front row even bigger, right? You know? so. If you want, you can maybe even do, did I say four front? I meant to say three front. You can do four front and seven uh, crit, but you know what? Crits win games and nothing is funnier than swinging with Gandiva and then double critting and dealing four damage. So <laughs> enough said. Then our four heal, got three of the vanillas, the parasols, cause that's the best uh, heal draw or heal for Dragon Empire. 
And Cure Flare Draco Kid, this is the one that gets an extra 15 shield if your opponent has a unit that gained a crit by a card effect or by a, a skill other than a trigger. It's a nice tech, but honestly, you can just run the four vanilla heal. But this is just a very, very simple trigger lineup. I feel like every Gen Devo list runs the exact same trigger lineup in main deck for the most part. So nothing special there, but that's pretty much it for the deck profile. I can just kind of quickly show how the deck, you know, kind of works, but it's very still self-explanatory, but it just kind of bonkers how fast this deck can accelerate. But we'll get into that in just one sec. So we got a really, really simple introduction to how to Gandiva.deck. Starting off, it doesn't really matter what you discard. Um, the minute that you ride Gandiva onto your grade two, this one lets the act ability be free. So let's just go ahead, ride that, get that going. If you wanna be really spicy and for whatever reason your opponent has a really big board, you can use Best Harvest now. However, the chances of your opponent having a big enough board to warrant using Best Harvest isn't really worth it. But I guess a one for one isn't bad. If it's in your hand, you can use Best Harvest, but it's not really necessary the turn you go into your first Candiva ride. Right away, we'll use the Act ability. It's free in this case. You can reveal the top five. If you end up retiring something, usually you'll retire one thing because your opponent will usually have one rear guard. But hey, look, if you retire just the the one thing, you can get a draw and bind something, which is nice. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's draw a card, bind something. Doesn't really matter. We got one down. Cool. Let's do it again. Kind of last. Oh, we didn't retire anything. Let's draw a card, bind something face down, right? We can keep it going. Oh, you can, you know, retire. If you did retire something, you bind something face down. You kind of blast, you re retire something else, you bind something face down. It just keeps going. Ideally, you would have cards like this, like Buchan on the board, or if you have your grade three card in hand, this is the one that lets you like just throw it down. You soul blast, bind another rear guard, retire something. If you retired something, you bind something face down. If you didn't retire anything, you draw a card, then you bind something face down. Then you're at five to six cards in your bind zone already. You throw it on your grade one, your vanguard swings, you bind this face down, you counter charge. Your Vanguard already has a crit and plus 12K, plus 10K to the front row. This is all things that can happen the minute that you ride to Gandiva. It's just kind of insane how quick it is. Your little twin drives, doesn't really matter. If you do have this on your board, that's just multi-attacking waiting to happen because you swing, your Gandiva swings, you bind face down, boom, more power. You look at the top five, you call anything, doesn't really matter. Your front row gets like plus 14K. So this is all just going crazy every single turn. So then the next turn happens, right? Take your little damage triggers, who cares? Maybe you lose a few cards in hand, right? You persona ride, you can do your act ability again, top five, retire something, maybe retire two things so you don't get your draw, whatever, but you still retired stuff. Guess what? You bind two face down and then you keep it going. Boom, soul blast, bind this. Retire something. You retired something, you bind something face down. You didn't retire something, you get a draw out of it, right? Now imagine all this while you have best harvest in hand. Where are you? <laughs> you do all this when you have best harvest. You're getting draws out of this. So, and your board just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It just keeps going. You swing. How much do we have right now? We have six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's 20K to your front row on top of the 10K for Persona Ride. You're swinging with a 43K Vanguard with a crit. You know, it, <laughs> this deck, just goes so fast and it has so much control, which is really, really fun. So that's basically how the Gandiva deck works. I would say the only way to get around this is your opponent bricks. They don't see their best harvest. They don't see their great threes. They just have no ways of retiring and they're a turn behind or for whatever reason, their Gandiva retire just like doesn't draw them the cards they need, their hands full of triggers. You just have to brick really hard with this deck. The deck is insanely fun. It's insanely powerful. I can see this get, getting simply out power crept just by the sheer fact that other decks will just do things faster. I don't really think this deck needs a nerf, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, that's it for the deck profile, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you again to our sponsor, 50 Cards, for 
always having the best deals. Go check out their nation bundles, their splits, their supplies like card sleeves, singles, everything you need for Vanguard's available at 50 cards. And be sure to use code Nexus for 5% off at checkout. And thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.